All right, guys. Welcome to another video of Ride with Raj. Uh, before I start this Q and A session, I would like to thank all of my subscribers for making me cross ten thousand subscribers. Yes, I am doing a giveaway, and I have already executed the giveaway video. Uh, that will be mostly shown next week, which is two thousand seventeen. Once we enter two thousand seventeen, I'll be talking about the giveaway video. Right, and before I start this Q and A session, there is one more thing. All right, we all know about the new colors of Royal Enfield Classic. Check these pictures out. All right, as you can see, there are three new colors. All right, we have the red, we have the blue, and we have the green. All these three colors are nice candy colors, and I personally really like them. You know what's the best part about this? Is that the the colors which Royal Enfield has presented is, is mostly on the tank. It's not on the other body parts like the battery cover or the toolbox cover and such. And I really like that idea. It makes it look more retro. Also, the new thing I notice is on the seats they have a white piping. I don't know if you guys can clearly see this, but there's a white piping around the border of the seat for the rear seat as well as the rider seat. So I really like these modifications. I'm eagerly waiting to get hands on these bikes and review them. I got the news that in Bangalore, one of the store has presented this bike. So uh, hopefully soon it'll hit Mumbai, and once it hits Mumbai, I'll definitely do a video about it. All right. So all the people who are looking for 2017 new bullets or new classics or new upgrades, uh, hold on, hold on to your horses. You might get some good goodies. So the first question is from Indrajit. Add kind, all right. I hope I pronounce it right. It says, "Sir, I've got a new classic 350. He's confused with the exhaust to install. Uh, he would like me to do a separate video of exhaust. All right, I've got this request even in pass. So I have actually approached the shop and requested him to let me do the differentiation between exhaust. And I have achieved that. Uh, and I'll be soon doing a video on it. But only thing is, next two weeks I have a lot of content of videos." And that's why it will be a little delayed, uh, but hang on, and you will get the video soon. All right. So Indrajit, uh, stick on. Indrajit also asked me uh, about does the Royal Enfield factory replacement exhaust upswept produces good thumb, and is it a free flow or with glass wool? Just to let you know, it is with glass wool. Uh, Royal Enfield for classic has a basic stock silencer and the upswept both in their stock. All right. Besides that, they don't have anything which is of a pass through. They would not do such an experiment because they are not hundred percent sure to provide a pass through, uh, which is a performance exhaust that is completely a aftermarket effect. If you want to do it, you can do it. So the upswept is pretty decent. I had it on my classic. All right, and it really gave me a very good simple base and a simple flow, and even the style. It really looks like a, a post World War II kind of a motorcycle with a bent pipe. So I really recommend that to all classic people who ask me that if we don't want a very loud noise and we want not to affect any engine or average or something, I really recommend a second replacement to the stock exhaust is the bent pipe exhaust, which is the upswept. So you can go for that definitely if you want to play safe. Like Sumit Rox has uh, uh, told me a couple of times to review the Himalayan. Yes, I've still not got hold of the Himalayan. Uh, whenever I've requested the shopkeepers. uh they've always told me yes you can take a ride take a very short spin and come back that's very limited for me so i'm looking for a rider who actually owns a himalayan so i can review it i have done couple of test rides on it but i could not review it in full length and that's the reason i want the bike to be arranged and once i get that i'll surely do that because everyone's eager for me to review the himalayan i will be doing a honest review about the himalayan so stay tuned for that Okay, Ibrahim Sheikh has asked me this question, and lot of other subscribers have asked me this question n number of time, and I am answering that again on this Q and A. I have answered this question in past also. However, I will do it again because again these questions have come up, and the question is very simple: that uh, uh, should I change the aftermarket exhaust uh, immediately, or should I do it after the second service? Because the people tell them to do it for after second service. Well, let me just let me just inform you, Ibrahim. A lot of people will tell you about the engine braking. All right, a lot of people will tell you about the the engine getting self tuned or the timing getting set on its own. Yes, you know the first initial month of your motorcycle, it's completely a new engine, so it takes time to heat up. Even the gasket and everything needs to you know really heat up and get accommodated to the whole riding experience. uh so basically uh, that's what we talk about that the chemistry between the rider and the bike is very important 
you know we go smooth initially we are not revving the engine too much initially the reason we are not doing all that is so that the engine actually adapts the way we ride it you know that's very important and that's why we can reduce the noise of tepid and all if we carefully ride the bullet so once that's fine after the second service or something you can change your exhaust for your performance by then you'll also know that when you should rev your bike and how much is your bike performing next question is from gorang nayak he says he's in the market for looking for a tourer motorcycle gorang nayak good uh, because i might also look for that next year for my long rides uh, currently on entry level adventure tourer ari himalayan but there is a news that the advanced bike like kawasaki versus 300 suzuki uh, we strong 300 or the ktm 390 adventure or the bmw 3 uh, gs3 and adventure are coming i am interested in himalayan but no abs on offer is it worth buying a himalayan nor or worth waiting i would advise you completely a personal advice is you wait for next year all right i'm not saying himalayan is a bad bike himalayan is definitely a good bike but people who are looking for abs people who are looking for larger tires people who are looking for tubeless tires or something like that should actually wait and not regret later on because i am sure the bmw 3 gs310 is coming in market deep by the way even the honda parallel twin 500 could be hitting the market in india so stay tuned for that my eye is very much on that motorcycle and abroad it's done pretty well so stay tuned till uh, next year year is just around the corner once we get new bikes then you should decide which store you should go for so the next question is from yash gupta and he says hey i am a city rider and i'm looking for uh, to buy a royal enfield which is the ideal bike thunderbird or the classic 350 well yash i have already done a video where i'm comparing the difference between the bike and the rider what he chooses for so please see that video of mine i think it will help you a lot if not you can again ask me and i'll guide you through Okay so the next question is from Kanwar Pal saying he has bought a brand new CL350 and it's 2 months old and after his first service he has some issues with the rear brakes which is making a scratching sound all right and after some 20 25 km of a run each day the vibration really increases so and he feels uh, something's wrong with the bike what's happening tell me a solution please relax all right nothing's wrong with the bike the screeching noise is definitely must be a brake pad for the rear brakes get it checked from the Ari showroom Get a get a new one or get it replaced or anything as such. The noise can go definitely. Uh, regarding your vibration after a 20-25 kilometer run, if you're talking about the thump and the engine increase because of the run, that's oil and fuel, bro. That's how it happens. You know, whenever you run a bike more than 30-40 kilometers, it really heats up, and the piston and the rocker arms are really doing their job. because they are as active as possible so uh, nothing to worry about that as far as the tepid noise is not too loud everything looks good uh, vivek balwani says that he has a matte green uh, paint job on his bullet is it illegal i think he's asking me is it illegal yes matte green is not allowed in the uh, maharashtra jurisdiction the reason is because the military color is green and they have opposed that and that's the reason royal enfield is exporting the green color abroad but not in uh, mumbai or any other part of india but i have heard from few subscribers they have it in certain regions uh, provided to them so i really don't know how they have that but what i know is that that color is not allowed because that represents the military and that's why it's not happening the next comment is from raj malshekar and he says a great informative channel i would say and thank you so much raj uh, because of you guys i made it so far and i hope i reach my target which i want to and stay tuned for my videos okay atif momin says he's 18 he is in love with classic chrome but he's afraid of the handling such a beast because it looks like a heavy bike what should i do well uh, atif momin everyone who starts uh, riding these bikes is obviously a little scared of the weight and the dynamics of a motorcycle what i feel is get used to of it start slow go on empty roads more ride more often and get used to it once you use it your confidence will really increase and that's how you become a good rider where you can ride any motorcycle you wish to uh, so atul agarwal says i have lot of questions about the color combinations as well well atul you must have seen in the beginning of the video there are new colors coming up and if you are planning to buy a bike check these colors out i really like them personally and uh, uh, if you're talking about 2016 uh, in 350 classic the ash white is nice the uh, the chestnut is a nice color and the blue lagoon is a nice color so check these three colors and let me know how it is okay so next question is from kayur deo kayur deo says that he's got a classic 500 squadron blue he needs tip for the maintenance of the body color and scratches yes kayur i have lot of questions from other subscribers also about this color 
because it's a matte color the same question is from a thunderbird subscriber who's bought the new blue which is really nice well uh, i'll just let you know please clean your motorcycle regularly with a basic wash all right and a basic shampoo do not use detergent all right that's not meant for matte colors and do not polish your bike by mistake all right besides that everything stay, stays the same and make sure a lot of sun does not hit your matte color because they might fade so it's better if you park your bike in the shade whenever you have the opportunity or you put a nice loose cover on your motorcycle so that uh, the sun actually does not penetrate to your matte color so the next question is from Yashas Gowda he says uh, he follows my Q&A sessions thank you so much he says he has an Electra 350 and his fuel reserve is not working does the reserve switch automatically as soon as the fuel is over after an empty tank should I need to turn on the reserve while filling the fuel who to check it out all right I think what he's asking me is once the tank is over should he put the cock on the reserve yes you need to put the cock on the reserve in the reserve you have nearly a liter on your tank so don't worry you can approach the, the most closest petrol pump uh, put in the fuel after you put in the fuel please put the reserve cock on on so that you know that the bike has fuel now and you can ride it on the on switch remember one if you forget not to put it on the on switch and it's still on the reserve and if you take it out and if you completely empty the tank your bike will just halt so it's very important that when you're fueling your bike up make sure that you have a habit to put the cock on the on as simple as that Rajaram says please give a review on desert storm I have a lot of questions on Instagram as well to review on the desert storm unfortunately I do not have a desert storm to review yet once I get it I'll definitely review it and stay tuned for that uh, so the next question is from Pranav uh, Lavesh Kumar he says can we change the tire of an Electra to a wide without changing the rims uh, yes you can put wider tires but in the limit of those uh, rims all right if you're talking about 18s or 19s i don't know which which kind of uh, uh, tires you would like to put on your rims if you're looking for very fatter tires which does not fit the rim i'm sorry you'll have to replace the rim however even if you're replacing the rim you'll need to put spacers and do a lot of alterations to the chassis which i would avoid to do it on a bullet all right i highly recommend people not to trouble the mechanical parts of a bullet because in future that bike will not perform and then you will complain so it's better to keep the stock or you can put better grips and a little broader tire so that the bike can do well uh, by the way just for your information classic tires do fit on the electra because one of my friend has done that all right so i hope i answered your question right next question is from Vishal Verma he says he has a tepid noise from the engine while riding Thunderbird 500 went to the service station for correct correction of noise mechanic says everything is okay please tell me how to reduce this noise all right um, uh, well Vishal the tepid noise is a common thing in Royal Enfield however if it's exceeding your uh, limit which it was then I think there is a little bit of problem in that if you feel uh, it's basically coming you please re please see my 500 thunderbird review video i have actually started the motorcycle in that so you will know how it sounds if it's very much similar to that that's common and if it's more than that then you can definitely go to the service center and compare it with any other thunderbird 500 i have a very interesting question from himang goel he says uh, he's a beginner and wanted to know if you can use a front brake and rear brake together and especially while, while, uh, while turning how should he brake very nice question that's the riding question yes i am actually constructing a video about the whole riding thing but uh, there is some glitches and some uh, technical issues i am facing due to which i have uh, halted that video but i am focusing on other videos right now but i'll be doing that soon so 2017 expect a lot of videos from me all right guys well uh, coming back to your question if you know that most of the expert riders will inform you that the 70% uh, of the braking is always the front brakes and 30% braking is the rear brakes all right this is actually when you are in a great speed and a good velocity all right i am not talking about turning when it comes to turning you need to be careful if it's a sharp turn you have to change the ratio where the rear braking increases and the front braking decreases a little bit because you might skid your front tire but if you're doing a basic turn the ratio remains the same that 70 percent is the front braking and 30 percent is the rear braking so continue that ratio and it'll help you a lot all right so the next question is from ankush sharma he says what's up he really does my work thanks ankush and he says that he has a concern he bought a classic 350 a month ago 
and when he went to the dealer uh, to know about the date, he caught him changing the battery from Desert Storm to Continental GT. And now he is worried whether he will get a company fitted battery or other parts or not. What should I do? Well, Ankur, you don't have to worry. They must be doing it for a reason. And just to let you know, most of the batteries in Royal Enfield 500 is similar. So you don't have to worry that much. All you can do is you can open up your battery cover and check your battery and also take the battery warranty card which they give you during your delivery. Just compare the battery number which is mentioned on the battery from the warranty card. If it's same, it's pretty good. You're secured for next two years. I think they mostly use Excite. If, then if, if they're using Excite, you're mostly secured for the battery so don't worry about it. I have a very good question from Pradeep uh, Moraz. It's more of a conversation and uh, Pradeep Moraz has some important points to share with me. He spoke about, I'll just read out his message. He says, Hey Raj, about tubeless tires on GT and spoke rims. I agree your answer was right to the person who asked it. This was my last Q&A. But some people don't know that even though GT comes with tubeless tires, it still has a tube inside. Yeah, I have mentioned that in my uh, understanding of tubes versus tubeless in my past Q&As. The tubeless tires also have a tube, but the tube is attached to your tire. It's non-removable. I had explained all these things in my past video, so check it out. I think you missed out on that one. Uh, and it says that uh, GT has regular rims, just aluminum instead of steel, which means one will still need to use a tube. I'm sure you know it. Yes, I know about that. But a person who doesn't know a GT may not. So I think we need that you should do a video about it. Uh, thank you very much and I have actually mentioned this in my Q&A and it was specific to GT. Uh, at 8.30 in the video you mentioned if your bike starts missing you turn the tap to reserve. GT doesn't have a fuel tap. Uh, Pradeep that 8.30 is not an answer to GT. It was definitely for a, a, a bike which does not have a fuel indicator. Uh, thanks for your note anyways and your observation Pradeep and yes but uh, I hope I have answered you right and if not no worries. Comment me again, I'll, I'll try to rectify wherever I've gone wrong. Alright, thanks for that. Okay, uh, questions from uh, Prasanta Mondal and a lot of other people. Which bike I should buy? I'm this height or that height. Please email me these questions and I can help you. I have done this in past week. Literally 80 to 100 responses over new purchases of motorcycles and advise them which one suits them and uh, whatever i share my opinion is completely facts which you share with me so i may be even wrong at that you know uh, maybe i would suggest a taller guy to go for a thunderbird and he might like gt you know you never know because he might like the performance of gt and just because his height is tall doesn't mean he should go for a thunderbird so there are a lot of aspects in purchasing a new motorcycle and if you guys want to know that please send me proper questions uh, on the email ID which is mentioned below alright uh, once you send me these questions I can try to help you out to purchase a new motorcycle and if it's helpful you can send me the picture once you buy the motorcycle and when you're happy with it uh, Abhijit Prince thanks a lot for a great comment which he says amazing video super videos keep it up I will do that and he says do a review of classic desert storm 500 yes I'm waiting for that motorcycle once I get it I'll definitely do the review Alright, so stay tuned for that. Uh, okay, all right. Deepak Chakravati Murugesan has a question that can he take a pillion on a RE Himalaya for a long ride? Because a lot of people are telling him yes, you can, and some are saying no, you cannot. No, you can take. I think uh, Himalayan is designed to be a, a, a mini tourer. Alright, it is the cheapest tourer you can get at current situation. Alright, there is no other competition for Himalayan right now for a tourer at that price, at that cubic capacity and at that kind of a uh, design where you can add the panniers, where you can add the fuel tanks for Leh Ladakh, where you can add a pillion with a rug sack behind. So yes, you can do it, but it all depends on your pillion's fitness abilities and your pillion's passion. If your pillion cannot do from Andheri to South Mumbai on a motorcycle, I don't think so that pillion can last long till Leh Ladakh or Kerala or South or wherever you're planning to go. So you need to be careful that your pillion should be really equipped and ready. Uh, because it's always a rider who's passionate for the rides and can pull the bike longer than the pillion. The pillion is just idle sitting and he gets more back aches or leg aches or any kind of pressure is because the pillion is not doing anything. The rider is completely concentrating on the road plus enjoying his passion and everything. That diversification helps the rider to prolong a longer ride 
but for a pillion he has no diversification just to sit and observe so if the pillion feels it that it's difficult then it will be difficult but otherwise pillion seating is not bad right Toyib Khan's question is that can he put the Pirelli tubeless tyres of GT can be fitted on classic 350 I don't think so they can be fitted on the classic 350 secondly uh, I don't find Pirelli tubeless tyres of Continuum GT doing justice to my motorcycle if people who are owning GT right now and seeing this will know what I'm talking about those tyres are not very well gripped and designed for the Indian cement road so anyways um, that cannot be done uh, so next question is from uh, Tarak Singh Jada. He says try to make a vlog on riding gears because I want to know uh, which jacket is best for CL350 rider. Tarak Singh uh, just to let you know the recent thing I have actually got in touch with a shop where I will be doing a weekly video fixed on all accessories, jackets, bags and everything. So stay tuned for that and I will be doing that a lot for you guys. Alright and you also asked what I am currently riding with. I am wearing a DSG jacket which I really like. Next question from Shivam Pandey, he's talking about the ceramic coating. I have heard a lot about this ceramic coating. This is wonders. It can really protect your paint. I have actually seen the whole process about it and I'm a little worried about the coating to peel off. Alright, and that's the reason I was not very sure about it because it looks very nice and shiny when you do it. But I don't know what are the consequences after some time. I'm being very honest. So I'm actually going to approach the ceramic coating guys and check how it is and if it really works well, I'll do a video and if it doesn't work well, I'll be honest and uh, mention it in my next QA session. Okay, next question is from Bhavya Dedia. He says that which bike is better for touring RE500 or Continental GD? Look, uh, I want to clarify this touring concept. When you say touring, it depends where all you go. Like for example, I can do a 600 to a 1000 km on a GD without any crunch. Alright, a little bit of a leg hurt here and there is fine. You know, a little bit of uh, feeling lazy or something is fine because you're just sitting on the bike for hours and hours and hours. A touring is as simple as that, alright? You should have the ability to sit on a motorcycle for a longer period and ride around in traffic when the city patches come in between, which riders hate. We hate, we just, we just want a complete highway to continuously go and that's what we enjoy. So if your question is about touring for 600 to um, 1000 kilometers, Continental GT is not bad, you can do that, you know? Even if you do it on a proper tourer, you will still have a certain pain somewhere or the other. So it's not necessary a bike can do that. Why tourer bikes are made for longer distances so that you can add up the accessories, they have a different kind of sitting, they have GPS in it, they have various kind of things in it and that makes it a tourer. So it depends, you can even tour, I, I have I met few people who have even tour on a Yamaha RX100 for long long distances. All right. So my, my father used to tour on a Lambreda scooter all the way to Ahmedabad and back once in every two weeks. You know, he used to do that. So it depends what uh, you're talking about, how long is your tour for. But otherwise, if you're looking for a very simple cruise and a straight smooth flow, go for the 500 Classic. I would really advise that for you. Alright guys, I hope you like this uh, session of the Q&A and you need to stay tuned for that if you have any queries. Please mention the questions in your comment section so I can answer them in my next Q&A session. And right now I have to review the Dominor because that's a request from some of my subscribers and I've got hold of a white Dominor at one of the shops. So I'm going there to the Bajaj showroom and I'm going to do that and I'm quickly leaving from here. So stay tuned for that video. As usual, eat well, sleep well, be good, signing off, Rides Raj.